Okay, so now we've gone left, we've gone middle, now we're going to go to the right side, also known as the opposite. Quite often, it's nice to have a, a right side attacker who happens to be lefty because 10% of the population is supposed to be lefty. I would say that less than 10% of the volleyball population is lefty. So anytime we get a good lefty, tall, athletic, can jump, has a fast arm swing, coaches like to use them either A, as setters, or B, as right sides, or C, as both setter and right side. So now, I'm gonna show you, even though I'm not a lefty, I'm going to show you a lefty approach for a right side attacker. Then I'll show you the righty approach. So this is important. Uh, a lefty, just like a, a, a right-handed player hitting on the left side would come on a 40 to 45 degree angle, a lefty on the right side wants to take probably a 40 to 45 degree angle approach and as a lefty if I were a lefty I would want to take a four step approach because number one it maximizes my jump number two it allows me to start a little bit earlier and assuming my setter has really good set location consistently I can start getting into my approach, putting more pressure on the defense. All right, so I want to take what's known as a four-step approach or a four-touch approach. And if you break it down and go backwards, I'm going to start with my hips open to the center. So my right foot is in front of my left foot, all right? And that gives me the opportunity to face the center who's in front of me, and I'm gonna open my hips, and then I have the option of hitting cross, angle, or if the ball gets on top of my head, I can turn and hit down the line, okay? So if this is my three, four, all right? So three, four, this would be my two, and then this would be my one. So I'm going to go left, right, left, right left I can step on my foot just to get used to the concept or I can start with my left foot in front again it's it's extra movement it's superfluous you, you don't need or not superfluous it's extraneous I, I'm getting my words mixed up now I I guess my vocabulary has decreased a little bit but in this pandemic you know we're, we're all sitting around we're trying to stay busy but let's be honest we're all getting a little bit stir crazy. So this would be extraneous movement, not superfluous, extraneous. So I don't want this left foot starting back here. I want this left foot starting up here as a lefty opposite who's going to take a four step approach. So my arms do very little. One, you see that? Small to big, small to big, small, big, and as I go into three, four, I'm throwing my arms back, three, four, and as I plant four, I'm throwing my arms up and I release my hips and my ankles, my knees and my ankles, and now I'm up in the air, I bend that elbow, and as I swing, through the ball, okay? So left, right, left, right, small to big, slow to fast, Again, I'm not a lefty, so I'm going to try to do this the best I can. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, if I'm not a lefty, but rather I'm a righty, which I happen to be. I don't encourage, I don't encourage starting well off the court, taking that 45 degree angle approach. And here's why. There's always an explanation. So it's up to me to tell you and teach you, and then you decide 
what works best for you. There are coaches around the country, around the world, where they will have a right-handed player start off the court taking this 45 degree angle approach. They tend to be super tall, super athletic, so they jump facing cross body or cross court, and then as they jump, they have the option of hitting that cross court shot, and that's the power shot. And quite often, especially in today's game of volleyball, it, it's become a, here's what I'm gonna do, stop me if you can. Since I'm not that tall, and since I don't jump that high anymore, I like to have as many options open. If I were 6'7 instead of 5'7, if I had my 40 inch vertical that I had when I was in my 20s and early 30s, I, I could maybe get away with starting outside in, jumping, opening up, and then hitting line. I would lose some power hitting down the line though, because I would have to force my hips to open up, and then I would turn and hit, okay? But since I'm a right-handed player, I'm gonna make this adjustment. Okay, this is about three feet off the court. So we pull this in. And now I'm in line with the sideline, all right? And this is about the 10 foot line. So uh, this is about the 10 foot line. So now I'm gonna start slightly behind the 10 foot line. I still wanna take my four step approach. So I'm gonna, instead of going left, right, left, right, I'm gonna now go right, left, right, left. Everything stays the same. One, two, three, four. Right, left, right, left. And here's the reason why I like my right-handed plays either starting slightly in the court and behind the 10-foot line or maybe even on the 10-foot line but slightly uh, on the sideline but slightly behind it. I like the ability to get to every ball. A ball that's set inside. The, the distance is about the same. Instead of going toward the pin, I just change my angle, go toward the ball. If the set's perfect, meaning it's about a foot to two feet inside the antenna, I just go straight to the ball. If the set's out to the antenna or slightly beyond the antenna, I just go straight to the ball. I change the angle of my approach. So now everything is within four steps. If I were to start out here as a right-handed player, one, two, three, four, this set I can hit, this set I can hit. This set I would not be able to hit. So that's why I like my, my opposites to start in the court and slightly behind the 10-foot line. So this is what it looks like. Right, left, right, left. Right, left, right, left. And you notice that it allows me to hit line. It allows me to hit cross court. I'll show you line and cross court again. Right, left, right, left. Line. Right, left, right, left. Cross court. So the breakdown that I showed you in the first video, where you start off here, jump, and then you add the closeout step, and then you add the third step, three, two, three, four, and then you just add that fourth step. You can, you can practice that same breakdown regardless if you play left side or right side. Again, in the middle, I highly recommend, especially at the beginner levels, start off with that three-step approach. There will be coaches who will tell you, start off on the left side and start off on the right side with the three-step approach, and there's nothing wrong with that. Three-step approach is probably 
easier to do consistently, especially at a young age, consistently three-step approaches are easier to do. However, you do lose a little bit in terms of uh, getting that momentum and explosiveness. Four-step, the er as soon as you can start a four-step approach and you know you're gonna be swinging on the left or the right a lot, I would highly encourage you to start practicing that four-step approach. All right, thank you, Atlantic Valley. Hopefully we'll see you on the court soon. Until then, peace out.